It's your city, your team. We're still Premier League. That's it. Welcome to 100% LCFC TV. I'm here with Mr. Alan Young again. Hi, Alan. We're back again. We're back again. Uh, is your voice recovered from yesterday's match? Um, just about, yeah, just about. But uh, it, was, it was a nice feeling. Every time you've got a sore throat, you know that the team's done well. They have indeed. I mean, we chatted yesterday straight after the match with some of the fans and yeah. everybody was in, again, jubilant mood from a, what another fantastic fight back. It sort of takes your breath away a wee bit, uh, Phil. Uh, you know, for two 0 down in the Premiership, in a team uh, against a team that is decent, they were they were decent. Let's give Aston Villa a wee bit of um, praise there. But to come back for two 0 down in the Premier League is 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 a tremendous feat. A little bit like Spurs had come to uh, King Power Stadium. It looked like Villa had done their homework on us in the first half or the first 60 minutes, they'd certainly got us uh, a sussed out, I think. Well, if teams don't, fill, they're going to come to their place and get beat. It's yeah. as simple as that. If they don't do, do the work and do the, the analysis, the individual players, Mares, um, Albrighton, Jamie Vardy, um, and even Canty when he comes on, the pace, Dyer will come to him in a minute, by the way, and uh, they, they have to do their homework on there. And they did, and, and, and Riyad Mares found it a wee bit difficult, I thought, in the first half especially, but uh, then came on his, his game, he found a wee bit of space. I think Villa were getting a wee bit tired by that time, and the fitness levels certainly showed. But uh, yeah, teams are are looking at Leicester City and thinking, we have to stop that threat. But if they stop that one, there's another one over there. And they stop that one, there's another one through the middle. And if they stop all three, there's a couple on the bench that will come, yeah. come and do something. So yeah, every team... Um, they do their homework, they do their uh, they work out how Leicester City are going to play. But so far, nobody's managed to do it quite right. There's a, there's a few players I'd just like to touch on with you briefly today, Alan. I, I know Merez is getting all the plaudits at the moment, and Vardy obviously playing for England done really well. I want to just pick up on uh, Richie Dillat, who is one of my, you know, I've got a soft spot for him. I, I like how he plays. And I thought he had a great game yesterday and, and turned up with a fantastic goal that started to turn it around. So... Well, I think, it, yeah, Dillard? I think his goal was a wee bit fortunate, to be absolutely fair. Oh, you're um, going to say fortunate? I thought it was I, a great touch. No, I think it was a wee bit fortunate because Richie Delat makes that run across the near post to get a flick with his head, not not with the way. But wow. he's compensated he and he's well. adjusted well, um, and it's it's sort of headed off the line in the net onto the bar, and obviously the goal's been given. Uh, but yeah, we I, I think a wee bit fortunate, but well deserved. Regarding Richie and his overall game, much better defensively. Richie, look great going forward, great pace as well, joining in the attacks. Um, but sometimes he's been a wee bit susceptible um, with the space in behind him. And I thought he did an awful lot better there. And he looks a far better player for doing that as well, Phil. He was, he, I mean, he, just to show, I mean, we all know he can bomb forward and be fantastic that. I think Marez did a lovely little backflip uh, down the line to him for him to run onto in about the 88th minute or something. But in the 95th, 6th minute, it was Richie Dillat who after that got all the way back to get back to just put the ball out for the final kick of the game for a corner. So he is touchline to touchline at both ends. Well, goal line to goal line, yeah. Phil. Not touch line to touch lines the other way. That's so, yeah. You know, it's sort of. Well, cross. I'm glad you're here, Alan. Ah, you know, right. I there you go. <laughs> the it's other, a shorter for touch line to touch lines. The other, yeah, I know. I like the shorter <laughs> ones. Um, the other player who, who I think we we're going to talk about very briefly is Nathan Dye. Why did Swansea let that player go? Well, we've just a, we've just been discussing. I we we having a wee chat about that, uh, Phil. And Nathan Dye, as soon as he came on, you thought, aye, aye. And you never realised how small the lad is and he's how tiny, fair. I believe he's, he's only about five foot two, and I've been told he's the smallest player in the Premiership. But has he got heart? Has yeah, he got heart. guts? You know, straight away he's causing problems. Straight away he's wanting the ball. Straight away he's sticking me in. And if he's not getting it, he's give me the ball. You know, he's getting a wee bit angry to the extent that um, that's, maybe a, that's maybe a reason why Swansea maybe was okay to let him go on loan. Because he might have that temperament, that fiery temperament. He did get booked for a... Yeah, he, Dean well, he's got into the linesman's ear for yeah. something that he thought he should have had. And then he Mike Dean's ear. But listen, let's not go to talk too much about Mike Dean because that's for another Yeah, I thought show. the ref had a superb game yesterday, Yeah, shut up. 
Shut he, up. He was on the ball. He was, it was the Mike Dean <laughs> show yet again. No matter where that man goes, it's the Mike Dean show. Come on, everybody. Come and watch me. Come and watch, you know, it's my game and everything like that. He's an absolute imbecile when it comes to a referee. Absolute imbecile. And what about the left back at Aston Villa? He booked him eventually. Yes, eventually. Five and then straight after, after when he smashed, I think it was Richie, he smashed him, and he, he smashed him again. You get yeah, sent off. Why not? I don't know. But Mr. Dean, I hope you never come anywhere near the KP Stadium ever. I mean, he missed the Vardy penalty as that well. That was I mean, a personal <laughs> message to Mike Dean, by the way. We, we were at the other end for the Vardy penalty incident and it, I mean we're a hundred oh. yards away but it looked penalty and I've watched it lots of times absolutely and I how has see. he not given he that right he's there, there. He was there yeah. he's right there and it is an absolute cast iron penalty yeah. I think even Sam Allardyce said it was a penalty <laughs> on match of the day he did, but, yeah, like, um, a... what he says I don't tend to listen to <laughs> but no definite penalty but uh, apart from that um, the referee was an, uh, an absolute shocker but we rose above it and we'll just finally touch on the fans because, I mean, I, I was sat with Sinky yesterday at the game and even at 2-0 oh, down, you. I know, lucky me, oh, it, was, it was really exciting, Alan, oh, as you can I'll imagine. Bet, yeah, yeah. Um, but when we were 2-0 down, I did, I did say to him, it just needs a goal. Plenty of time. If we were to get one, there was plenty of time. I remember saying and, plenty of time. And the fans, as soon as a goal went in again, the stadium got buzzing. Erupted. Yeah, it did. It was a little bit quiet before that, I'm going to be honest, and say up until, I think... The, That's the, excusable though, Phil. Yeah, you know, you're so. taking a knock and then another knock. And you're thinking, well, at 1-0 down, we've got a, still got a great, yeah. great chance. At 2-0 down, that chance is maybe a wee bit diminished now. But, but when we got the goal back, the first goal back, there was only te one team was yeah, going to win I it. agree. Only one team was, was going for that win, and that was us. And we deserved it in the end. And again, I must say to the fans, oh. when we were 2-0 down, the fans did. There was about another 10-minute chant of Jamie Vardy's going to have a party. So the fans did start, I think to get the momentum back into the team. And, and Ranieri was just about to make the substitutions just before they scored their second goal, which was a fantastic goal. I'm going to say I was right behind it. Yeah, and yeah. he struck that It was, very a, it was a lovely strike, yeah. sometimes yeah. say, you know... That both was both goal. goals were fairly similar, but from different sides of the penalty area. So Ranieri was about to turn the match, or to make the substitutions, which Tinker. did. Tinker, you were going to say Tinker. I know, I was going to say He was going to bring them on, which I think even at 1-0 down, I think that would have turned the game. At 2-0 down, suddenly it went a lot harder, but... Fantastic support from the fans. Oh, amazing. And, and, and I do honestly hope that the supporters realise just how, how important you are to, to, the, to the club, to the team, to the players. And um, I was sat with Tom Meehan for Kasabian yesterday and, uh, and a lady called Ju Julie Va uh, something. Um, <laughs> never again. Um, but Tom, Tom was, Tom was uh, unbelievable. I mean, he's jumping around like a you know a screaming monkey and and shouting at the referee and and then when when the the chants start, Tom's the first one up in the West Stand to shout at everybody, "Come on, come on!" You know the West Stand are a wee bit subdued sometimes, but even they were throwing in a few wee swearies yesterday, which was lovely, and absolutely lovely, and it was right to, all round the ground. You watch them, the clackers going. The big flag at the start of the game again. Keep doing that. That's wonderful. And uh, it just creates a great atmosphere. People were saying there was no atmosphere at the KP. The supporters are, are attending to say, well, we proved you wrong. I think you saw the video of Jim, the security guard. Oh, come on. Jim, Jim, <laughs> Scottish Jim. You've got to, you listen, make yourself known because that was absolutely <laughs> magnificent. That just epitomised. The whole game, the, the attitude of the players, the supporters, and you. We hope you don't get any trouble. <laughs> I'm sure he won't. Actually, I would give you a pay rise <laughs> yeah. and a medal. But well, I think he's, he's, like, he's, he's oh, aye. if you could get if Jim, if you could contact us, I aye, think come you'd on, like to come on, and you have a chat with young. You can allowed, see it. If yeah, you're allowed, assume. you know, come and sit down here. We'll get we've got exercise, extra, extra <laughs> L chairs, and uh, no, seriously, come in. But uh, that just that just summed it all up for me. I watched it again and matched the day last night and wound it back, wound it, wound it back. And I was absolutely howling. Well done, Jim. So from myself and Alan, we'll catch up with you next time when we'll be previewing the Leicester trip to Stoke. Plenty more of this to come. It's your city, your team. We're still Premier League. Let's hear it.